People often ask me how I can be a feminist and a Christian. My response is that being a feminist Christian is the only way I can be a Christian. The author of 1 Timothy would certainly have considered feminist theologians and female clergy to be disobedient daughters of Eve. And there are a lot of Christians out there who would agree. And that's okay with me. Feminist theology has taught me how to reinterpret scripture in ways that are healing and life-giving. And I refuse to allow conservative Christians or anyone else to take my God away from me. As a feminist theologian, one of the things that gives me joy is reinterpreting texts that have been used to hurt or control people. Because the God that I know is full of light and life, because the God that I know holds me in my grief and walks with me in my pain, I know that the sacred word of God is not a weapon, nor should it ever be used to harm or shame people. Despite two millennia of misogynistic interpretations of Genesis and Eve, there have always been other ways to read this story. I love the story of Eve in the garden. My second child is named Eve. When we look at it with fresh eyes, it's quite a remarkable story. Have you ever noticed that God lied to Adam and Eve? While the serpent plays the role of the foil here, he's meant to set Eve up for her role as the bringer of wisdom and moral agency to the human community. The setup for this action that she takes is that God lied to her. God told the first couple, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you will die. And the serpent reveals the truth. You won't die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And here we get to the real heart of the story, the verse in which Eve acts on behalf of all humanity. In fact, the moment at which Eve not only exercises her own moral agency, but she chooses that very trait that defines our humanity. That knowledge that makes us moral creatures, our ability to know good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. When we say that we need to trust women to make the critically important decision about whether to continue a pregnancy, it is rooted in a reinterpreted understanding of the story of the Garden of Eden that recognizes and affirms the moral agency and wisdom that Eve chose in the garden for all of us. The story of Eve is the story of why humanity is able to distinguish between what is right and wrong. And it marks this moral agency, this knowledge, as part of what it means to be made in the image of God. Reinterpreting Eve's actions as the origins of one of humanity's deepest connections with the divine helps us recognize the importance of respecting and supporting the moral agency of women. Across the country, politicians and judges are acting to force the disobedient daughters of Eve to bear children, rejecting our moral agency, imposing state control over our bodies and our childbearing. The problem lies not with the daughters of Eve, but with those who seek to use the tools of the state to police morality and codify a minority religious belief as law of the land. The fault lies not with Eve or her daughters. It never has. <laughs>